Good morning. Uh, my name is Robert Klein. I'm chairman of the governing board of Prop Proposition 71's California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, established by the voters uh, through 7 million positive votes in 2004. Our mission uh, today <coughs> will spotlight uh, Devic's disease. And we have the distinction of being here at UCLA for this presentation. On Monday morning, UCLA will open its new stem cell research center in the Terasaki building, a $48 million project that was awarded $19 million by this agency to make a dream possible. It is our hope that with the great research going on here and throughout California, it will help make the dream of the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation of curing or substantially mitigating Devic's disease possible. The Guthy Jackson uh, Charitable Foundation <coughs> is represented here today by Victoria uh, Jackson and her husband Bill Guthy and Victoria will be introduced by Sherry Lansing. They have an alliance partner, the All Greater Good Foundation, that is working with them on this remarkable initiative they've launched. Sherry Lansing is a force of nature, <clears throat> a dynamic, driving, inspired, and motivational advocate for biomedical research. She is a member of our board, a member of the UC Board of Regents, a member of the board of the Carter Center, and many years before Proposition 71 was even dreamed of, she joined with Armin, Armin Hammer to, stop, to start the Stop Cancer movement uh, in California something that has been continued with vibrancy and been brought a new robust life by her chairmanship of the Entertainment Industry Foundation that every other year has the special on cancer that hopefully we all get to watch for its remarkable fundraising and educational value that it brings to us, not only in California or this nation, but in 137 countries where it's viewed. In 2007, the Academy of Motion Pictures honored Sherry Lansing with a humanitarian award. It is an honor every day to have her as a member of this board, as chair of the governance subcommittee of the board, as co-chair of the standards committee. I'd ask you to welcome Sherry Lansing, a great treasure of the state of California. Thank you, Bob. Um, thank you for those incredibly gracious words. And I think I speak for all of us on the Stem Cell Board to say how extraordinarily lucky we are to have you as our leader. And this board and this movement would not exist without you. I especially want to thank all of you who are here today. I want to thank you for caring about this disease as much as I do. We're here to learn about Devic's disease or as it's commonly known, NMO. This is a disease that attacks your immune system and attacks the optic nerve and the spinal cord. It often results in blindness as well as paralysis. So I really appreciate all of you coming here to learn about this. I first became aware of this disease over six years ago. And it was when I met a remarkable young woman who's here today, Candace Coffey. When I first saw Candace, my first reaction, I have to say, and this, as a woman I can say it so it doesn't sound sexist, was what an extraordinarily beautiful woman. She must be a model. But in fact, she's a graduate of this very institution, UCLA. But what I didn't know about Candace until I got to know her is that she battles Devic's disease every single day. I didn't know that she was blind in one eye and I didn't know that she lives in a constant state of chronic pain. 
But despite that constant state of pain, she was there with us from the very beginning as we fought to get Proposition 71 passed. And I can still remember as if it was yesterday, watching her stand before audiences such as yourself and talk about the hope of stem cell research for NMO. And I really believe that it was Candace, along with every other patient advocate, but especially her moving and eloquent speeches that encouraged the voters to overwhelmingly pass this, this bill. So I owe an incredible debt to Candace, as we all do. She was there with us from the beginning, and she'll be here today to tell you about her journey over the last six years. At the time when Candace spoke, she told me and she told all of us that this was an incredibly rare disease. It's what we refer to often as an orphan disease. But I never expected that this disease was going to strike me or someone I loved. It was such a rare disease, such an orphan disease, that knowing Candace, I felt, was the only time that this disease was going to contact my life. But I was wrong. And I learned very quickly that nothing is a rare disease. And it's especially not a rare disease when it strikes you personally or strikes somebody that you love. And that's what happened when my girlfriend Victoria called me over two years ago and told me that her wonderful daughter, Allie, had been diagnosed with NMO. I actually couldn't believe it. Allie is, was 15 years old. She was, was and remains the most vibrant, intelligent, filled with life, athletic, young teenager I had possibly ever met in my whole life. It didn't seem possible that she could have any health issues, let alone NMO. But as all of you know, NMO doesn't care. It strikes in a random way. It doesn't care how young you are or how talented you are or how vibrant you are. In addition to seeing Allie's remarkable handling of this disease, the courage, the bravery, her positive thinking, I saw something else remarkable happen. I saw my girlfriend, Victoria, literally stop her life. She stopped her life and dedicated her life, along with her husband, Bill, to saving their daughter's life. You know, they say there is nothing more powerful than a parent's love. And I saw that in Victoria and Bill. I saw a mother on a mission. And there's nothing that can stop a mother on a mission. Victoria, along with Bill, established a foundation. This foundation did something that has never been done before. It took this orphan disease and it drew attention to it. There had never been anyone paying attention this, to this disease. Very few scientists were working on it, and they were working alone. And Victoria brought all these scientists together. She made them collaborate. She made them share information. She also brought patient advocates and the patients themselves into this process. She did something that has never been done before for this disease. She is also, along with her husband, Bill, the single largest funder of this disease in its history. And because of this, remarkable things are beginning to happen. But she cannot do this alone. That is why we are here. We are here to learn, and we are here to be educated. But I have to say, I have no doubt. I have no doubt that just as Candace's movement just as Candace's involvement with Prop 71 made it happen, along with the other patient advocates, I have no doubt that my girlfriend Victoria, with her incredible knowledge, her incredible passion, and her incredible will, will unlock the mysteries of this disease. 